Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today we're moving on to part two of our flat field correction series, where we're gonna learn how to check the quality of your flat frames, make sure that your flat frames match your light frames, and look at some issues that can happen with your flat frames to cause flat field correction issues. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Now let's jump on in and continue our journey with flat field correction issues. Flat field correction issues can be a tedious and daunting task to diagnose and correct. But don't let that deter you. This series is designed to make this as easy as possible. In part one, we learned that all involved frames need the camera settings to match in order to prevent unwanted effects and artifacts. We took the master dark flat and took the mean value and compared it with the master dark mean value to ensure that those matched. We also examined the camera settings across all involved frames to ensure that those matched as well. Gain offset exposure time between the light and dark and dark flat and flat even temperature and even though those all matched we still have a flat field like this so what happened at the end of part one we noticed an interesting relationship between the master flat and the master light here we have a bright area at the top right of the light frame and then a dark splotchy area near the bottom left. If we look at the bright area on the light frame, we have a value of 0 0.0209. If we look at the dark area of the light frame, we have a value of 0 0.0179. Coincidentally, if we look at the flat frame, the area that coincides with the bright area of the light frame, we have a value of 0 0.4209. And then the area of the flat frame that coincides with the dark area of the light frame, we have a value of 0 0.4519. In other words, the dark area of the flat frame coincides with the bright area of the light frame and the bright area of the flat frame coincides with the dark area of the light frame. And this brings up a couple of terms that are worth noting. Overcorrection and undercorrection. If you have a scenario where the uh, dark area of the flat frame coincides with a bright area of the light frame, and or a bright area of the flat frame coincides with a dark area of the light frame, that's what we call overcorrection. Undercorrection is the exact opposite. So how do we make our flat frames effective? For that, it's worth having a set of rules, a checklist, if you will. Now here, I have what I like to call the general orders of flat frames. If flat frames are calibrated with flat darks, exposure time must match that of the flat frames. In other words, if your flat frames are four seconds long, your flat darks or dark flats, as they're also called, must also be four seconds. All involved frames must have the same camera settings, gain, offset, exposure, and temperature. Now, when I say exposure time must match between all involved frames, all that I'm saying is that your dark frames, the exposure time must match that of the light frames, and your dark flats or flat darks, exposure time must match that of the flat frames. Flat frame ADU must be within the sensor's linear range. We'll go over that in part three. Flat frames must be taken with the same filter or filters the light frames they are meant to calibrate were taken with. In other words, if you're imaging with your red filter, then your flat frames must be taken with the red filter. If you're imaging with the blue filter, then your flat frames must be taken with the blue filter. 
And if you're using a one-shot color camera and you're imaging with, say, the Antlia quad band filter, your flat frames must be taken with the Antlia quad band filter. Flat frame rotational orientation must match light frames. This is important. In other words, if you're imaging a target at 27 degrees rotation, then your flat frames must also be taken at 27 degrees rotation. Your light source must provide even illumination. If you have any bright spots or dark spots in your light source, it will cause issues with flat frame calibration or flat frame correction. If there are dust motes, they must match between light frames and flat frames. If you have any rotational orientation differences, it will not calibrate the dust motes out. Also, if you have any extra dust that accumulated, in other words, if you took your flat frames at a later time than your light frames and more dust accumulated, that will also cause issues with flat, uh, flat field correction. And your vignetting pattern of flat frames must match that of the light frame. Mismatching vignetting patterns can cause issues. Have you ever had to read a manual in order to figure something out or complete a task? And that manual is just so tedious and the only thing that you can think about is just give me the cliff notes. I'm gonna show you how to get the cliff notes of a lot of these in one easy go. So let's go ahead and take our master flat frame. And let's go to script, image analysis, flat contour plot. And we're gonna uh, render that. And this is how your flat frame looks. Think of this as the specifications of your flat frame. Here we can see that we have even illumination. Don't worry about this center and how it's elongated over here. The flat is evenly illuminated. Now let's go ahead, let's bring up the master light. And we can see how this field looks. Let's run the script image analysis flat contour plot on the master light frame. Now we can agree that this light frame has uneven illumination across it. And we can see it with the flat contour plot. If you have a flat frame and you see anything like this, even if it's minor, you have uneven illumination and that can and will cause issues with your flat field calibration. So just a, a good thing to check if you uh, are having some issues. Now, we can uh, easily say we have even illumination in this flat frame. Now, let's go ahead and bring up one of our light subframes. And let's go to script, image analysis, and run a flat contour plot on it. Now when we compare these, this is obviously different. Our vignetting pattern does not match between the two of them. Our rotation doesn't match between the two of them. We can see the short end on our light frame here, and we can see the short end over here on the, uh, on the flat frame. And then the long end is up on the top on the flat frame. And then the long end is off to the left. So our rotation is different. If we were to overlay these, they do not match. And that's what's causing the issue with our flat field correction. So we need to match the rotation. Now it's always a good idea to take your flat frames at the same time that you're taking your light frame always a good idea. It allows you to get the dust that is already on your optical uh, train or your imaging train. It allows you to capture that so it's exactly the same. It allows you to prevent issues like this where rotational differences occur. 
So always try to image your flat frames at the same time. So let's go ahead, let's exit out of our master flat, uh, flat contour plot. And I have what I called G flat, good flat. Let's go ahead and run a flat contour plot on my good flat frame. Now, when we compare these, they still look different, but they're the same. And what do I mean by that? Our flat frame is a mirror image of our light frame. So really, all that we need to do here is go to Image, Geometry, Rotate 180 degrees. And now when we take it and overlay the flat frame on the light frame, we are matching. Our vignetting pattern matches, our rotational pattern matches, everything is matching on this. Now let's go ahead and go to process, all processes, and let's bring up pixel math. Let's minimize our flat contour plots and let's move them off to the side. Let's get our light frame again and let's get our good flat frame. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to rotate the flat frame 180 degrees. Keep in mind, the only thing that I rotated was the contour plot. So let's go ahead and we have our flat frame selected, let's go to Image, Geometry, Rotate 180 degrees. Now keep in mind, what I'm about to do, this is not how you use flat frames to calibrate light frames. This is just to give you an idea of how this is gonna look, how everything comes together. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do light divided by G flat. Let's create a new image triangle, drag and drop. Let's go ahead and stretch. And now we have a much better result. Now we have a classic overcorrection issue versus this right here. So now let's say that everything was good. Let's say that that flat frame that we just used calibrated this light frame and it looked good. Now again, this isn't exactly how you calibrate. This is just to give you an idea. It allows you to have a visual representation of how the flat frame will interact with your light frame. So let's say we did not have any overcorrection or undercorrection issues. We like how it looked. What do we do? What we can do here is right click on the workspace and we can go to uh, get an image container and then we'll go click this little folder and we can go to uh, where you have your um, flat frames saved and we'll select all of the flat frames that you know to be good. We'll do a little output directory here. And I have a folder, correct orientation. We'll select that. We'll drag the image container onto the workspace. We can exit out. We'll go to process all processes and we're gonna come down and we're gonna find a process called rotation. Now, it'll look like this by default. We go to angle and we want it to flip it 180 degrees, triangle and drop it onto the image container. And PixInsight will go ahead and rotate every single one of your flat frame subs. And then once it's done, 
what you would do is run WBPP as normal. Now, one word of caution, if you do this, you're gonna to wanna to move the original flat frames from the directory if you use a directory in WBPP, take all of the original flat frames or the flat frames that you that were good and you needed to rotate, move those to another folder, bring the flat frames that you just rotated using image container and bring those into your directory to load into WBPP. And from there, you just run WBPP like normal and it will take the now uh, 180 degree flipped flat frames and apply them to your image. And if you need help with WBPP, check out my video. I'll have a link to it in the description of this video here. And make sure to stay tuned because in the upcoming parts to this series, we're gonna learn how to go ahead and finish correcting for this right here. So I hope that you found this useful, and if you did and want to help support the channel, check out that join button and consider joining a Hidden Light Photography membership. There's lots of perks in it for you, and your support really helps me bring you more content. Also, do me a favor, that channel icon that popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Drop a comment in the comment section. Have you run into any flat field correction issues, and what did you find? What questions do you have? And then, check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.